In this video, we're going to talk about the material layering phase. Now, we have quite a few materials already. We have a ground, we have some rocks and pebbles and some twigs, and so currently everything is blending together. So what I'm gonna do here at this stage is add a dirt layer across the entire surface to help fully integrate and blend everything together to make everything look like it's part of one cohesive environment. So what we're gonna do, if we zoom in and take a look at our base, you'll notice that if I come up here to the link creation phase, which you can see here at the top of the toolbar, uh, it's set to standard mode, which means that I can work with channels individually like this. So like I said, we're in this material layer blending phase. So what I'm gonna do is hit three on the keyboard and that is going to collapse all of my channels here into this one single output. If we take a look at the link creation phase, you can see this is now in compact material mode. This means that I can work with all of these channels as if they were one material. And so now what we're gonna do, like I said, is we're gonna add a dirt material on top of everything here we have so far. So to do that, I'm going to use a material node. And if we come over here to our material filters, this is in the library, and I take a look at my blending category, there is a node here that's very good at handling this type of situation, and that's this material color blend. So I'm just going to left click and drag and drop this material color blend here into my graph workspace. And you'll notice here that the input here, the primary input, accepts a material input. If I hit one on the keyboard to go into standard mode, you can see that that input is actually represents several different input channels. So again, I'll hit three to collapse everything and we are going to make a connection. Now, before we do this, what I like to do is come over here to the instance parameters and I wanna make sure that I set up the channels. Now here in Substance Designer, we support both the specular gloss and the base color metal rough PBR workflows. Now we've been working with metallic roughness workflow, which is the default workflow in Substance Designer. So I don't need channels like my diffuse, which is enabled by default. So I'm just gonna disable this. Um, I'm not using a specular channel, so I'm gonna disable this. Same thing with glossiness. Uh, metallic I'm gonna leave, even though we're not really using metallic. We are using an ambient occlusion, so I wanna enable this to true, and I wanna make sure that my height is enabled to true as well. So now that we have the channel set up, I'm going to make the connection here. So uh, from the material output, I'm just gonna left click, drag out this connection and plug this here into the material. So now you'll see that we have this connection. Again, if I tap one on the keyboard, you can see that in compact mode, all of the channels were automatically connected to the correct inputs here on the material color blend. Okay, so now that we have this set up, I'll collapse this channel option and you'll see that we now have some options here for the channels that we're working with, such as base color, normal, rough, metal, ambient occlusion, and height. Again, these are the channels that we enabled here in the channel list. We also have a grayscale mask input. So what this material color blend does is it allows us to go in to each one of these channels and set up a material by using these uniform values such as color or roughness using a, sl a grayscale slider value here. And then we use this mask input to control how this material that we're setting up through this color blend node, how it blends with the incoming material, which is the material we've been working on throughout this entire course. So what we need to do now is we need to create the mask. Now, if we come back here to the library in the mesh adaptive category, there is a section here called mass generators. And here there's several types of different mass generators that we can use. And there's one in particular that I wanna work with. Here you can see towards the top, we have this dirt node. So I'm gonna left click and drag and drop this node here into the graph. And the reason I'm gonna use this dirt node is because it's going to produce a mask, or I will call it a dirt mask, based on some specific mesh data that I feed into it. Now we don't actually have a mesh, so if I zoom in here to the node and I just tap the one key again just to make sure I expose all the input channels, you can see what it's really talking about here uh, is in terms of mesh data is ambient occlusion, curvature, position, and world space normal. Now we call it mesh data because these are maps that you could actually bake using the integrated bakers here in Substance Designer. That's not something we actually cover in this course. However, we can derive these types of maps from the data that we have already created throughout this entire course. So what I'm gonna do here is first grab my ambient occlusion. Well, I know here from my base material that I happen to have some ambient occlusion information already. So I'm just going to make this connection here. So the ambient occlusion output for my base material, I'm gonna plug that into uh, the input here for the dirt. Again, if you take a look at my creation phase, I'm in standard mode to do this. 
Now, the next thing I need to make this dirt generator work for my purposes is I need a curvature. And we can easily create a curvature map from our normal. So now I'm gonna hit the space bar and I'm gonna do a search for curve and you can see that we have a curvature, curvature smooth node. And I'm going to actually work with this curvature smooth node. So I'll left click to create an instance of this node. You can see here that this node takes a normal as input and all we need to do here is just take the output of our normal from our base material and just plug this in and now we have this curvature information. So now I can take the output of this curvature and just plug that here into the curvature input of my dirt node. Now in this case I don't need to worry about the position of the world space normal. I'm done with all of the input connections I need to make this dirt generator work. So I'll hit three on the keyboard just to collapse all of my channels. And if I double click this dirt, you can see that here is a mass that's starting to be generated for me. And here in the instance parameters, I have some controls on how this mask is created. So for example, if I start to lower this dirt, you can see here that it lessens the overall dirt effect. Now I'm gonna zoom in here and you can see that what's really happening is this generator is generating this mass based on, again, these inputs that I have, which in my case is ambient occlusion and curvature data that we're feeding into it, which is the data that we created for our ground material. Here you can see that we have a lot of this white here in the mass, which is going to represent the dirt that's collected in the ground. And you can see that because we're using our ambient occlusion and curvature, we have the dirt collects along the edges of all the various shapes that also collects in these occluded areas as well. And this is gonna be perfect for creating a dirt mask that we wanna work with for this material color blend. So now that I have my mask, I can take the mask and just plug that directly here into the grayscale mask input of this material color blend. So now we'll double click the material color blend and now we can start to see the results here in our 2D view. Now I'd like to view the results of this material color blend in my 3D view, so I can simply just use my right mouse button over the node, drag and drop that, and then let go of my mouse button here in the 3D view. And this is the result that we get right off the bat. Now we need to make a few changes. Uh, so we'll left click on the material color blend. First thing I wanna do is come over here to the height, and I'm going to just take this opacity and set this all the way to zero. Okay, so now, we have removed all of that height information that was ge being generated for us. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is come over here to this base color and I'm gonna change this from white because I'm trying to make uh, a dirt integration layer here. Now if I wanted to do snow, you could see that, uh, well, I could maybe use this for a snow effect as well. But like I said, in my case, I wanna create some type of dirt. So what I'm gonna do is try to set something maybe a little bit more like, uh, kind of like this kind of light brown perhaps. Now, once I set a color, I can also change my blending mode. So I may want to just maybe set this here to be a multiply like this. Now it's a little too intense. So I also have this opacity slider that I could use to kind of feather uh, this back a bit here in the color. And you, so you can see, let me hit one on the keyboard again to expose all my channels. And I'm just gonna double click this base color uh, output. So that's already what I'm viewing here in my 2D view. But you can see that the options here for this base color and these properties, this is allowing me to change this material color that's being blended or mixed with my incoming material, which is the material we've been creating throughout this entire course. All right, so at this stage, we've set up the base color of this material color blend. So we'll close that up. Here we have our normal, and I'll just double click here. So now I can view my normal data. At this default setting of height for the source, this material color blend is not actually affecting my incoming normal map. So if we take a look at the incoming normal map, you can see that it's actually the same as the outgoing normal map. But let's say that for some reason with this dirt mask, I wanted to be able to create normal information on top of this. Well, I could switch my source here to mask, and now you can see that this dirt is also now contributing to the normal that's coming in from my previous material. Uh, now, I don't want this, so I'm just gonna set this back to height. It's basically not gonna do anything at this stage. Now, we can also just double click here and take a look at our roughness, and let's close up normal, and let's look at our roughness controls. Now, for example, if I take this opacity to zero, uh, you can see that that dirt, it's not being added or blended into my roughness. So here you can see, for example, I can set this opacity all the way up to one, and the dirt that's being added based on the generator of the mass, so if I double click the mass, you can see here, this is what's being applied to my roughness channel. 
uh, we now have uh, this information here because the opacity is set to 1. And if we take a look at the, the grayscale sliders uh, set all the way to 255 or white, we're setting this to be a full rough value. So one thing I could do, let's say I want to set this to be a smooth value. So now if we just kind of move around here in my viewport, let me just move my light around a little bit, you can see that now we have this dirt, and this, maybe this is more like a, like a mud or something like that. This material that we are blending with our ground material, you can see that we've set that roughness to be a low value. And of course, we can you know play around with this however we see fit. In my case, though, I'm just going to set this to be kind of a full rough value. So we've set that. We'll close up our roughness. Uh, you can see here, if we take a look at our metallic, we have black. Again, This is uh, there's no metallic in this ground surface. So now we're going to take a look at our ambient occlusion. So if we come over here to our ambient occlusion, if I set the opacity to zero, you can see this is essentially just turning off this uniform value here. It's not adding that to our incoming ambient occlusion. So what we could do is, again, set this to one, which means we're now mixing that occlusion. Uh, because this is set to full white, it's basically kind of obliterating some of these kind of dark kind of cavity areas. So what I'm going to do uh, is just simply take uh, my value slider here and just move this down. So I may want to do something, let's see, more like uh, a value like this. And this becomes my new ambient occlusion. I could also adjust my opacity as well. So we'll do something more like, say, this here. And then lastly, we have our height information. And like I said, we don't want our height to, we don't want this dirt to contribute to any of this height information. So for the opacity, I'm going to leave this all the way to zero as we set initially when we started to set up the values for this material color blend. Okay, so now we'll kind of zoom out here. And uh, again, I'll hit three on the keyboard just to kind of close up all these channels. And what I can do is just now go back to the dirt generator and I can start to play around with things like the dirt level so if I decrease this you can see I'm basically removing some of this dirt or I could increase the dirt level and now we have a lot more dirt we also have uh, this grunge and a contrast amount as well so a lot of settings that we could use uh, here to dial this dirt effect up and down uh, these could also be parameters that we expose which then gives you the ability to make this texture even more modular. So like I said at the very beginning, the main reason why I'm adding this uh, material color blend here is so that I can just very easily add or mix a new material on top of my ground material. This new material is just simply a bunch of uniform values like a, a base color, a roughness based on just a uniform value here. Uh, same thing with our ambient occlusion uh, based on just the uniform value. And so we're using this dirt, which is uh, being blended on top of everything, as what I refer to as an integration layer. So basically it just kind of helps integrate all of the various elements we have together, like our ground, these pebbles, uh, these, these twigs, and then we have this dirt that's kind of blending on top and underneath and cavity areas. And like I said, it just kind of helps to integrate everything and make it all look like it's part of this same environment. So that's going to close out this video. Here we discussed the process of material layering. We used the material color blend node to add a dirt across the material surface. In the next video, we are going to take a look at creating the outputs we need in order to export textures as well as publish a substance SBSAR file.